Thanks for joining me today. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this tutorial, I'll demonstrate the new user interface enhancements in Corel Painter 2020. One of the first things you might notice is that there are now labels in the properties bar, and these labels make it easier to make sense of all the different properties and what they relate to. For example, Resat and Bleed kind of go together here, so they're in this media group. If we look over to the left, then all of the different stroke properties are grouped together with a stroke label. If you don't like these labels, they can be disabled. You can go to Edit Preferences, and then look under Interface. And here you can change the property bar to be short without the group labels. You can also tweak the brush selector bar height. But it doesn't stop there. The entire property bar has been revamped. There are now more flyouts and palettes for all the brushes and tools. For example, if we click on this green flyout here, you can see there's a new flyout that combines green with the papers and paper library properties. And if we switch to a different tool in the toolbar, let's say this lasso selection tool, you can see that the property bar has been updated. You can now access all kinds of commonly used commands and features for the selection tools. You can even switch between the various selection tools like so, rather than having to do that here in the toolbar. You have options to anti-alias, turn the marquee on and off, you can modify your selections and so on. If I switch to the shape tools, then you can see that there are lots of properties for the shape tools as well. If we go back to the brush tool, depending on which brush we select, we'll see different properties up here. If I switch to an airbrush, you can see that we get all the properties for airbrushing. If I switch to a digital watercolor brush, then we'll get all the various properties for working with digital watercolor brushes. So no matter which type of brush you select, you're going to see more appropriate controls up here in the properties bar. I'll select a real watercolor brush. We'll choose flow map dry. And you can see that gives me access to a real watercolor flyout. I can change my flow source from paper to flow map. And so I can very easily go in here and change all this stuff using a flyout, which means I don't have to have all these different panels like flow map and real watercolor present on my screen taking up space. I can just simply pop them out, select what I want, and then they disappear. Another thing you might notice in the properties bar is there's this grouping called shape that's right next to media. So you can really easily control the media and the shape for each brush. So if I wanted to change the shape of the brush, I have control over dynamic speckle since this is a dynamic speckle brush. I can pop that open, or I could pop open the size panel, or I could pop open real bristle. So it's showing me the relevant controls for this particular kind of brush. This grouping of shape and media is also reflected in the advanced brush controls. If we pop that open, we can now see that there's this edit panel that has shape and media controls. So here's all the shape controls down here at the bottom. We can change the shape of the brush, or we can switch to media if we want to control the media that's coming out of the brush or the media that the brush is applying to. That gives us control over the paper green, real watercolor, blending, and so on. So these two buttons just kind of separate those two different types of controls. Because of this change, the extended properties bar has been removed from the properties bar. Another thing you'll notice that's missing was the general button, and that's because the general panel has been included in the advanced brush controls. So you can see we can now find it here. Another cool feature is that when you're using the brush tool, the eraser tool, the selection brush tool, cloner tool, or dodge and burn tools, properties that modify brush strokes, such as mirror painting, perspective guides, and align to path, have now been grouped into a new stroke options button in the properties bar. So if I click on this button, I can see all of my options for drawing strokes. I can turn on perspective guides. You'll see that that icon updates to show me that perspective guides are on. I could turn off perspective guides. You'll see the icon changes back. When perspective guides are enabled, I can go back to this menu and I have control over a lot of the different properties of the perspective guides. So I can be drawing here in perspective. And then if I wanted to, rather than having to switch back to the perspective guides tool in the toolbar, all I need to do is just go up here to this flyout and I could make a change. For example, I might want to hide the horizon line. Now the horizon line disappears. I could also change the preset and so on. I'm going to go ahead and turn off perspective guides. If I wanted to, I could also turn on mirror painting. This will let me draw with symmetry. And if we look in stroke options, then we have all the different properties for working with mirror planes. In addition to perspective guide and mirror painting properties, we could also align to path using this stroke options menu. So there you go. Those are some of the advancements to the user interface in Corel Painter 2020. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to check out some of my other demonstrations of Painter 2020's top features. Thank you.